Hi everyone. Uh, thank you for joining uh, our presentation of people. Uh, I'm very nervous. <laughs> so, uh, today uh, we are talking about the open stack networking. Uh, currently, open stack is network MS plugin moved to uh, MS OBS to MS OBM. So and, uh, it is enough for most use cases. However, uh, we need more functionality of uh, L3 routing, uh, our use case, especially network function virtualization, and uh, so in this presentation, we are uh, talking about the solution of this uh, our issue, and uh, for the enhancement of the neutron and the uh, uh, Okay, first is our, our introduction. I introduce uh, our speakers. Uh, we are KDDI, a uh, telecommunications company in Japan. Uh, today, the two of us uh, will be presenting. Uh, I'm Kyo and uh, chief architect of our private cloud development team. And uh, I will be talking about the background and this concept uh, in the uh, first half of the our presentation. My name is Aoshi Hiko Kamaki. I'm from KDDI. Um, I'm an engineer of the product team, and uh, I will talk about detail of our challenges later. Okay, so our first is an introduction about our company. Uh, KDDI is a telecommunication company in Japan. Uh, we provide uh, both uh, mobile network and uh, fixed networks. Uh, the mobile network uh, uh, consumer service is branded uh, as A2. Uh, we have uh, over 16 million sub, uh, mobile subscribers. So far, uh, Kiri has uh, had uh, not a company-wide uh, common platform. And uh, mobile system using a net, net virtual stack for each network function. Uh, but the fixed system have been using a horizontal uh, common, uh, common platform in fixed domain. Uh, this was a financially ineffective, so we are now unifying it uh, on through company-wide common platform. Uh, our new common platform uh, is built by OpenStack uh, using Red Hat distribution, Red Hat uh, uh, P17, and uh, it is currently developed across uh, five regions in uh, all location in Japan. And uh, the one of the region is the local region, and uh, not named as global. Uh, the global region to provide uh, location independent studies like Keystone, Horizon, and Digital. Uh, we currently have uh, around 2,000 servers, uh, but it are gradually expanding now. Okay, uh, let's talk about the main theme of this presentation. Uh, to building uh, this our common platform, uh, we face the uh, sugar network challenges. Uh, the challenge can be categorized into uh, three words, performance, and agility, and flexibility. Uh, usually, when discussing the NFB context, uh, performance issues are often highlighted. Uh, of course, performance is a very important point of the NFP. Uh, however, we face challenges uh, around agility and flexibility uh, over the few years to operating with NFP. Uh, especially running multiple uh, systems uh, on a common platform, it was very important to us. Uh, in this presentation, agility meaning to how well users can self service provisioning of network. And the uh, flexibility means that uh, users can choose to use not or not to use or are using dynamic routing in virtual virtual network. In general to uh, in general uh, to achieve on demand provisioning or net networking using type of self service network. Uh, in this approach, um, administrator creates a private uh, provider network and share it for tenants. Uh, then uh, the user creates a neutron router and uh, use NAS to connect to 
the external network. Uh, if a user uh, needs a fixed IP, fixed IP addresses, uh, use a floating IP address. Uh, with this approach, uh, all tenants use the same subnet. So there is no need to change in the uh, uh, physical network every time to uh, use a provision. Uh, however, there are some uh, issues with this approach in the NFB context. Uh, first is the performance. Uh, performance can be challenged due to uh, processing. And uh, the network node will be uh, will be came a bottleneck. A second is compatibility issue. Uh, unfortunately, uh, many protocol of a mobile network uh, does not that do not support a NAT. So these region reasons, uh, self service network doesn't used in uh, in NFB traditionally. Uh, in NFB, a uh, provider network has been created for each tenant network. Uh, this approach is like uh, connected to a physical network to a physical network VLAN directly to a virtual machine. Uh, this approach allows uh, VLAN to leverage uh, the high performance of the uh, uh, physical network. Uh, moreover, using SRIOV, uh, uh, is a can uh, you can is a can achieve the near diameter performance. And however, this approach means that uh, OpenStack is uh, practically not involved uh, in the actual network provisioning. So you also need to configure to uh, physical network uh, accordingly. According. <laughs> Uh, we have uh, uh, represented this to exist based solution uh, in a radar chart. This is an image. Uh, the general self service approach uh, offer agility, but uh, lack, lack, lack of performance and flexibility. Uh, on the other hand, totally an heavy approach uh, performance is well, but uh, uh, they have a, a significant uh, issue with agility. So we need to more balance the solution. Uh, traditional approach uh, often result in uh, over, over performance. Uh, so we think uh, we can improve agility and uh, flexibility to uh, sacrifice performance and uh, literary efficiency. Uh, we consider to an um, approach that uh, would replace the neutron router, router to a uh, high performance virtual router appliance on self service network. Uh, yes, concept for solving this problem. Uh, first, we, we use overlay network like Junaid or Vexram for switching between virtual machine and the leverage the uh, obvious DPDK to uh, address agility issue in open time. Uh, next step, we need to consider uh, how the virtual machine connect to external network uh, using this uh, overlay network. Uh, we propose uh, connecting a virtual router to on-demand networks created in OpenStack. Uh, this router would use PGP to connect to external network devices and uh, other tenant networks. To avoid, uh, uh, avoid making the PGP router a performance bottleneck, uh, so it is essential to use a high performance uh, router with implemented by TPDK. Uh, let's dive into the uh, detail of the concept. Uh, traditionally approach, virtual machines connect to the uh, data center network by layer two protocol. Uh, so data center network provides gateway IP addresses uh, and uh, with fast hop redundancy pro protocol with uh, such as VRP or uh, any cast gateway. 
uh, is that new concept is this role taking over uh, a virtual router. The virtual router provides a gateway IP address for OpenStack virtual machine. And the virtual router advertises its own gateway IP address subnet prefix to the data center network via PGP. Uh, this virtual router uh, then forwards packets to the external network without remap. And we are operating many, many uh, VRA brands in our physical network. So we will set up uh, this separate, uh, this set up uh, separate virtual router for each VRA. Uh, these are concepts. So next we have the study to real deployment. Uh, one option is a single stage and a multiple router. Uh, in this option, the virtual router created by each uh, tenant network then direct to the connect to top of rack switches. Uh, this approach is straightforward, but uh, uh, could lead to more physical network connection points. So it increasing management cost in data center network, and uh, it has a potentially potential for, uh, it has a have a potential for the tolerance issue. Uh, second is uh, option. Uh, second is uh, option in, in a single stage and a single router. Uh, in this option, virtual router uh, does not create it for each tenant network. Uh, Instead, virtual router add interface or virtual uh, VRAM uh, for each tenant network. Uh, this will, uh, will reduce the number of router. However, uh, may reach scalability issue and uh, and they make very uh, wide in the bus radius. The third approach involves a two-stage setup. Uh, in this option, address the first uh, options issue. Uh, reduce management cost by reducing the connection point to the data center network uh, side virtual router. In the end, uh, we chose uh, uh, the two stage setup, and uh, also it may having uh, more virtual router, uh, but we believe the benefits outweigh the uh, drawbacks. So from that, uh, I will talk about details of our challenges. So we conducted a POC uh, to uh, verify the feasibility and identify the uh, two major challenges. The first challenge is functionality and the performance of virtual router. So we need a virtual router that uh, is adapted to the NFV use cases, including the high-speed data plane with EPDK and some implementation of routing protocol, uh, BGP, and of course, uh, we need a stable software. After searching, uh, we found uh, that there are not so many uh, <coughs> options available. However, uh, fortunately, uh, we were able to find a uh, uh, virtual router appliance with DPDK pre-made. Um, second change is operability and manageability. So <clears throat> it was ex expected that many virtual router would be uh, created. So we need to consider how to uh, create them and also how to automate the creation of the process. So this second topic, uh, second point is the main topic of my presentation today. So as I mentioned, um, uh, we select a two-stage uh, <coughs> Use by topology. Uh, so now uh, we call or uh, we define the router connected to the top of rack as an inside, and uh, the virtual router in the on the open stack network as the outside. So while admin side can be managed statically, um, <coughs> the outside router is dynamically created by users. So we need a strategy for managing uh, the outside router. 
So therefore, we aim to manage the downside rather uh, through the neutral API. So let's talk about neutral. Uh, neutral has um, uh, <coughs> features called uh, neutral flavor and and service time framework. These features is uh, <coughs> our, me our mechanism to introduce plugins and <coughs> for uh, each network flavor. And that has been used to introduce uh, various plugins for ML2 OVS, and now it's also introduced to ML2 OVN. So uh, we, we decided to use it in this time. So we developed a new, <coughs> we developed uh, <coughs> neutral plugin using uh, custom neutral plugin uh, using uh, neutral service time framework, neutral framework to create trans side error. Uh, this plugin uh, automatically creates a virtual machines for trans side error and also generated the uh, configuration for errors. Uh, using the <coughs> information in the neutral database and applies to the virtual router in background. So with this plugin, uh, our user can create the, their own virtual router uh, simply by executing the OpenStack root router creating command. Uh, here is a step of <coughs> uh, creating the downside router. So as uh, I mentioned, we have the uh, separated uh, external networks. So uh, to connect the tenant side router to the admin side router, uh, <coughs> the inter internet network between the two uh, <coughs> is uh, prepared in advance by administrator and also said to be visible to users. Then user, ca user can create uh, tenant side routers and attach these interconnect network as ex external gateways, and also add it to the port to the router uh, their own internal network. So uh, <coughs> the user uh, run the, this command. Our plugins, <coughs> uh, our plugins uh, make the bunch of routers and apply the configuration to the routers. So uh, the router start uh, automatizing the internal networks to the admin side router. So uh, the user's internal network can reach from the outside. So uh, now um, I will talk about more detail of the virtual routers, uh, <coughs> virtual instance, the virtual machines. So in our, in our province, um, virtual router are built as Nova virtual machines. So there's uh, some uh, points. So <coughs> I will explain these points. And the first, if HA is requested, so uh, our plugin uh, builds uh, two virtual machines and also configured with VRLP. And each virtual machine has three ports. One is management, and another is external and internal port. And, and this external and internal port is trunk. And also, uh, we are running, uh, creates the empty network for trunks. So because uh, this trunk is only to connect to these virtual runners, virtual machine. And the external and internal ports are connected to the sub port as trunk. Um, this is because <laughs> our virtual run appliances uh, do not support hot flag, but uh, support adding or removing variants. So if we need to add it as a port to the battery router, so we do not uh, need to disturb it, only uh, add it a port and <coughs> configuration for the new port. Next, uh, for management configuration of virtual routers, we use the ANSPO. 
So, <coughs> so the diet state of vital water, including network information, vital machine configuration, or IP address, uh, is defined in the visual database. So our plugin generates the desired configuration from, uh, always, always generates the desired configuration from the neutron database information and applies to the virtual router. Virtual router. Uh, this Ansible prefix is called an import from the Python neutron modules. So up to this, up to this slide, I, I explain the details of our architecture. So I will uh, share more two points uh, about <coughs> our architecture. So running BGP on TransSide, uh, TransSide router provides additional benefits. It allows users to run BGP on their own virtual machines so that uh, they can ensure data speed redundancy or uh, enabling IP NCAS by themselves. Additionally, um, Kubernetes MetaLMB can be also deployed in our open source cluster. <coughs> the other point is that regarding the combination with OVM. So, <coughs> our plugin uh, does not replace the OVM. So, our, our plugin only used for the ASV routing without NAC and for dynamic routing use cases. Uh, for functions such as layer to switching, NAT, and access controls, security groups, or other functions, uh, still using the OVM. So, in conclusion, uh, by utilizing the existing neutron features, uh, network flavor, service time framework, and new emergency OVM features, and the DPDK enabled bunch of router appliance, so we have utilized the high-speed, flexible network that meets any, any FB use cases. I think our approach is good balance of performance, agility, and flexibility. And our network solution and the Kubernetes <coughs> uh, OpenStack enhanced Kubernetes simple networking capabilities, enabling efficient Kubernetes operate, operations for CNS, CNF deployment in the network. But finally, uh, we'd like to express our gratitude to Red Hat for their cooperation in making it possible. And similarly, we have jointly published a white paper with Red Hat on OpenStack on OpenShift cooperation. <laughs> so, please take a look. Uh, that's my presentation. Thank you.